All right, so the point we left this game last time was we were moving around. We had a timer that moves shapes down. Anything that was hit the bottom turned into a solid block. And likewise, if you hit a solid block, it also turns into a solid block. So what I'd like to do now is start looking at rotations. So arbitrarily, I'm going to pick the up key, and I'm just going to do clockwise rotations. You could choose other keys and do counterclockwise rotations if you wanted to. So I'm going to do the up key is going to do rotations. At the moment, I don't have one, but I will in a mo uh, second. Rotate clockwise is what I'm going to call this. It's like, what? I don't know what that is. And I'm like, that's because I haven't created it yet. So this script will be rotate clockwise. And by the way, if I go look it up, it's like, oh, that one. OK, I'm fine now. Don't forget that it's open and closed parentheses, and it's got to match exactly upper and lower case. No spaces are allowed, so on. All right, rotate clockwise. There's one more variable I'm going to need, which has to do with how the shape is rotated. So right now, in create shape, I have this thing called shape, which is keeping track of which of these shapes it is. I would actually like that to be a global variable so that I can use that in my rotations and not have any issues. Now, I could just manually type that in everywhere I go, but I have a more clever way of doing this. If you hit the little uh, icon up here, this is find and replace. And I can replace shape with global dot shape and hit replace all, and now I'm done. So find and replace is a good friend if you have to do the same thing over and over again. So basically, shape is getting replaced with global dot shape so that it's in the same spot everywhere. I'm paranoid, so I'm going to test this and make sure I didn't screw anything up. OK, good. The other thing I need to do is I need to set up another global variable. I'm going to call this rotate. And I'm going to reset that back to 0 every time. The reason why is when I create a new shape, I want to make sure the rotation variables reset with each new shape. And rotate is basically going to keep track of which rotation this thing is in. For the shape, it's really easy. But for the other ones, it's going to matter. All right, I'm going to put my testing back in for the global shape and say, all right, let's start with the line. I mean, I could start with a square, but my rotation code is really easy for that one. So back to rotate clockwise. If I'm looking at, oh, I don't know, zero, which is the square. Do nothing. All right, we're done with that. If global dot shape is one, now this is the line. What I need to do is I need to figure out whether or not my rotation is vertical or horizontal. In my game, uh, global dot rotate. If it's zero, that's what I start with. And this is vertical in my game. It might not be in your game, so if you decided to start it horizontally, make sure you keep track of that. Um, you can just say else here because there's only two possibilities for this particular shape. I'm going to be a little more clear in this and say if global dot rotate is 1, just to make sure that it's very clear that this is the, if you rotate it to the other part. Strictly speaking, this part is not necessary. I'm just trying to make it clearer what's going on.
All right. I need to check to see if by moving the various shapes, if I'm going to hit something. So I'm going to have to check block 1 in my shape and check to see if I move it left 32 and down 32, am I going to hit something. So I'm going to use kind of a trick that we used before where I'm going to say create a new variable, which I'm going to call collide, set it to false. And now I need to take shape 1 and try moving it and see if that hits anything. There's a couple ways I could do it. I could do it with a, use a width block. I could use global shape 1 or block 1, I think, for, and just manually put that in. There's, so there's more than way, one way to do this. I'm going to do it with, well, let's start with the thing that's the place. I'm going to check to see if I'm placing meeting. So place meeting has an x, y, and obj. The thing is, this is referring to self. So I'm going to have to change what I'm moving. So I'm going to say just before this, with global dot block one. I'm going to check to see if I move this guy left 32, which is one movement over, and down 32, which is plus 32 to the y, am I going to hit a solid object? If, that, if that's true, let's see, do I have enough parentheses? I do. Because I'm in a width block, other dot collide equals true. Something I've never really mentioned before, but is actually true. If there's only one statement that's part of an if, you actually don't need uh, curly braces. I'm going to put them in just because I like to make sure that I have matching braces, and it makes it clearer in my code. Technically, because there's only one thing in the if block, I actually don't need this set of curly braces. I need other dot collide here because I went inside of a with block. This belongs to self. When you go inside of a with block, what used to be self is now other, so it's other dot collide. This is going to happen again, except it's going to happen with block 3 and block 4. And I need to change the plus and minus. So I'm just going to copy and paste those and then change what I need to. So there's the first block. I need to make this block 3. I'm leaving block 2 alone. This will be block 4. 3 is moving to the right, 32, so that's plus. And up, 32, so that's minus. Basically, one block's worth. Block 4 is moving to the right two blocks, plus 64, and minus 64 here. 